um, Roper Osoro. It is that time for the fans on this is where now we discuss everything that is happening around the world when it comes to matters football because that is what men love when we go when we gather around our major topic of conversation has got to be football women and then and 2022 that's the major <laughs> part of the conversation but football takes precedence because that's what everybody loves and we have this feeling that you can never explain someone loving his own football team. You can never explain that, but they love it. It's like asking a football player when he scores a goal, how does he feel? But he will never have that, that answer. Joining us here for this edition of the Fan Zone is Eric Kaganya. Eric, long time, but how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good, I thank God. Yes. Uh, good to see you guys. <laughs> yes. Still doing a good job. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to the Touchly and also Tyrus here, still with me here as my co-host here today when it comes to matters football. And that is everything that we are going to talk about right now. And before we get into all matters that are going on to football, it is actually now the last month. We are getting on to the last 100 meters when it comes to the leagues all over the world when it comes to the England Premier League, the Bayern in uh, Germany, Italy. It is the last month with the six or seven games remaining and by the end of next month actually we'll be knowing which teams are going to be winners. But before we talk about that for you, Eric, what has been your highlight of the week when it comes to sports? <laughs> And then, and then the Super Cup issue. <laughs> 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 uh, really the, yes. it caught people by surprise. Uh -huh. uh, it came mm -hmm. within a short time. It had also disappeared. Yes. Raised a lot of controversy mm -hmm. during the week. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the social pages, uh, there's a lot of exchange and people are wondering. Well, what did you make of it? I was more... Uh, mine, uh, I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> it was a good idea. Yes. But these teams are not leaving their domestic leagues. Uh -huh, uh, for okay. them to come and represent like uh, the Champions League, the elite, yes. mm -hmm. uh, the elite league. Yes. Uh, but uh, I was not for the idea that uh, mm -hmm. they leave their domestic leagues to mm -hmm. be playing uh, the week in, week out. No. Yeah. I was for the idea that maybe we can uh, it can replace the Champions League where you have them on Wednesdays and Thursdays, mm -hmm. or Wednesdays and Tuesdays. Yes. And then over the weekends they still play there. So for you, you have the idea if it could have been a franchise football. Yeah, franchise, mm -hmm. franchise because football. Because if you look yeah. at it uh, uh, yeah. realistically, you find mm -hmm. that clubs are under pressure. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the players we have right now, uh, mm -hmm. they're just mercenaries. The contracts mm -hmm. are, <laughs> are are at so high for these for these clubs. Yes. So they need other sources of revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, I was looking at a case of Manchester United. Pogba is demanding five hundred thousand pounds per week uh -huh. yes. to sign another contract. Mm -hmm. Where do you get that money? Yeah. And you see with the Super Cup coming in, uh, other, the clubs will be able to make that, 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 that amount of money co yeah. easily. Yes. Uh, yeah. That wow. My, my For you, Tyrus, it's an idea you could lose. You could lose to add it. Again. Yeah. Because mm. look at the ticket pricing. Mm -hmm. All the costs will be passed on to the football fanatics, the mm -hmm. football fans. Yes. And then football goes further and further away from the common man. And football is the common man's sport at mm -hmm. the end of the day. Yes. How will you afford to uh, go and watch mm -hmm. your favorite club in the European Super League? Yes. Which, for it to exist, mm -hmm. was going to borrow a lot of money from JP Morgan. Mm -hmm. Massive bank, one of the biggest banks in the world. Yes. At the end of the day, the tail end of the cost effect mm -hmm. will come down to you and me, our our clones in Europe, yeah. the ones who love football and they support those club <laughs> clubs and want to go and go go watch them as they've been watching the UEFA Champions League through the years. Yeah, it be already UEFA Champions League tickets yeah. are out of this world. Mm -hmm. It's they're barely affordable uh, now in the uh, European Super League. Just forget about it. So the football goes away completely. It, from the it, common it, it is now, uh, it was going to be like a, a game of the rich now. The rich of the rich are the guy, the cream de la cream of people of money, are the ones who could sit in those stadiums to watch those teams play. And even media, uh, you, okay, you can't afford to go watch. Then you stay at home and maybe you watch it on the internet or you get TV rights to watch. <laughs> That would also cost you an arm and a leg mm -hmm. at a time when people are struggling to put food on the table with COVID-19 and all that. And the effects of COVID-19, 
yes, there are vaccinations, mass testing in Europe and all that, but the effects of COVID-19 are going to be felt for a long, long time to come. Yeah. Where will you, I mean, priorities, where will you get money to yeah. now top up the bills to watch these games on your internet or on television? The game was just being taken farther and farther away from you and me. But I think maybe, mm-hmm. maybe the, 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 the step was uh, uh, too rushed, but I think uh, uh, if you look at uh, the evolution of the game, we are heading there. Yes. The game is now being money-minded. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you look at uh, the ticketing, uh, it is becoming more expensive as time goes by. Mm-hmm. Why? Because you see, uh, players, the players we have right now uh, are not the players we had 20 years ago. Yeah. You find that the players that were there 20 years ago was because of passion. You love a certain club, you want to play for that club. Mm-hmm. You don't mind how much you'll be paid at the end of the day. Yeah. But today, the players we have right now, uh, together with their agents, uh, mm-hmm. look at an agent like Mino Raiola, yes. he takes, he takes most, al- almost 30-40% uh, of, uh, you see, such kind of greed that yeah. is coming. Then what the happens world. to meritocracy? If you yeah. have a cream of the crop playing yes. in the European yes. Super League, yes. and teams like Leicester, mm-hmm. who are now... Um, looking for a top four finish in England and hoping to qualify for the UEFA Champions League next season to mm-hmm. play against the cream of the crop mm-hmm. and hopefully pull off a 2016 surprise yeah. like they did in the English Premier League and win the UEFA no, Champions League. There was still a chance because these 12 clubs yeah. uh, were the founder members uh, mm-hmm. and uh, it was supposed to be expanded to 20 clubs. Yes. So there's still a chance that uh, we'll have more teams coming, just like the way the Champions League was formed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started with a, a, a little number of t- teams and then it yeah. increased over. These, these 12 clubs were trying just to insulate themselves against yeah. things like COVID right now. Because mm-hmm. they made losses. Could it be like... Uh, what, 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 Why what, the what, favoritism? What, Why these 12 no, clubs? No, no. The big clubs. Why not the big clubs? How do you arrive <laughs> at the... At the Conclusion that these are the big clubs. No, the the, 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 the owners. No, the, the owners that the, you won the, the trophy. Arsenal. You <laughs> Look at Arsenal. What owners <laughs> when we talk of European football? No, the, the Look at Arsenal. <laughs> really? What <laughs> owners? What owners? Uh, They've never won. The question. Won. The question will be, what about UEFA? It could be like the dead of UEFA now because these see, teams are the majorly make uh, UEFA the but Champions the rot, League. The rot in UEFA and yeah. the rot is, uh, that is in FIFA is what has led to this because uh, FIFA uh. had no plan. Yes. To, 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 to insulate these, these clubs. And yeah. I listened to, 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 to Perez saying that we've had to lay off some workers. Yes. And uh, uh, workers who've worked for that, for Real Madrid, uh, since he was a small kid. Mm-hmm. He's now uh, 58, you want to lay him off. It's so painful. Yes. And, and, and those are the things that, you see, COVID-19 has hit everybody. And mm-hmm. everybody, uh, once you're hit, even you as an individual, you go back and say, what can I do to insulate like, myself against? Like I was so saying, <laughs> Arsenal have never won the European Cup. Uh, they've dominated the English Premier League. Uh, uh, in the past, a <laughs> long time ago, <laughs> a lot of waters and passed under the bridge. Yes. You see, it's it's not based on fairness, to be honest. No, I understand it, it really the clubs isn't. were, were, were invited. Yeah. Others did not take up that, that, that invitation. Yeah. Maybe when Bayern mm-hmm. refused to take up that invitation, that's Arsenal was considered. You never know. Mm-hmm. Yes. When and PSG refused where to take I agree it, with you is FIFA, was considered. FIFA are not also exempt the, of blame. Yeah, yeah, they are not they, exempt they're, they're of blame. Mm-hmm. They are also yeah. talking of expanding a World Cup. Yeah, yes. And that's not right. Uh, for the World Cup, they are, they are taking, I think, to 46 teams. Like six. That's not they want to expand the Champions League. They want the Champions League to be like a league. Also, oh, UEFA, yes. I, I don't agree with UEFA. Yes, you take away the excitement. They're, 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 mm-hmm. And we discussed that earlier on. They're talking of that reforming of the 2024-2025 UEFA Champions yes. League. Yes, It has a lot of question marks that it's raising, which we discussed earlier. Uh, f- for instance, they're reserving four slots for the cream of, yeah. of, of the crop of mm-hmm. Europe. Yes. Again, that's not based on meritocracy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So the people I was taking seriously in this debate that lasted for about 48 hours earlier in the week yeah. are the fans. Those are the people I was feeling for. And of course, the beautiful game. But now, Football deserves fair. Wh- what about the welfare of the player? Because n- here, nobody... And the player, obviously. So- yeah. someone is player, lo- I think it, you, s- you put it correctly now that these players are coming now mercenary yes, they're being they're hired to play yeah they're playing for money mm-hmm. because you see uh, these clubs uh, uh, they want to maintain uh, uh, their, their, their top uh, uh, players mm-hmm. and how do you maintain your top players right now it's not because of passion it's because you're paying them well mm-hmm. and you see for you to pay them well you need sponsorship deals yeah. you need everything like that and mm-hmm. you see what the super cup was coming to guarantee these 12 clubs 
because these 12 clubs were looking at their own welfare, was coming to guarantee that, that they will continue having the best players, they will continue to be able to, to, to afford the best players. You see Real Madrid in the last two seasons, they have not been able to sign. Mm -hmm. they, have not, they, they are used to signing Galacticos, Cristiano Ronaldo, David but Beckham. But at the end of the they, day, they, they've not been able to sign since, what since happen, Hazard. Eh? Or, or uh, should happen. Mm -hmm. Yes. There should be a ceiling now that sort of says, but you can't spend more than this but much. But UEFA has failed in that. Remember, in financial remember when uh, the, the mm. financial fair play, mm. yeah. Man City was found guilty, they appealed, mm -hmm. uh, it was overturned. The mm -hmm. corruption in UEFA, mm -hmm. the corruption in FIFA is what is resulting to this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I think still at the end of the day, this is the discussion <laughs> we should have. There should be a ceiling. More, Otherwise, things will yes. just get out of hand and we'll keep on finding ourselves in this situation. It, it is a conversation that rose up during the week. It's on hold as, as of the moment, but you never know what will be happening in the near future as these clubs also have a say when it comes, because it, the owners also have a say when it comes to the clubs, mm. because they are the ones who came with this idea but now let's go ahead and talk about uh, some as the legs now come to an end uh, we look at uh, the english premier league now so Dan Dale, Manchester City is going with that trophy. I, I think we can safely say that unless mm -hmm. a miracle happens. Yeah. Uh, if they had lost uh, the other day, mm -hmm. uh, maybe there will still be hope for, for Manchester United. Yes. But you see now, uh, uh, it becomes really complicated for Manchester United because they're, f they're, they're banking on Man City to mess up. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. For them to be able to win. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Manchester United shot themselves in the foot yeah. uh, with some uh, draws that they, could, they were not supposed to, to, to get those draws. Mm -hmm. uh, they were beaten by Sheffield that game they should not have been beaten you see yes. such kind of uh, uh, games eh? and i think uh, we can safely say a man city will carry it but but uh, 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 away from the title race that uh, manchester city has gone with uh, you look at uh, we are remaining with i think six or seven games to go for the english premier league but it, it has been a very beautiful season looking at the way Leicester has come up to challenge for the top four position. West Ham. West Ham, <laughs> the way they have come to challenge for the top four position. Liverpool, who are, the who are actually the league, uh, the Premier League Defending holders, champions. Ha cannot even make the top four if they, they don't concentrate on the, last, the few remaining games. It has been a beautiful season so far. It's been a season of upsets. Very difficult to predict. Mm -hmm. And... Even just Newcastle. The other time, a few weeks ago, we were talking about them in terms of relegation. Mm -hmm. Then they picked up, yes. pumped up themselves just at the right time. And now we're talking of other teams in terms of relegation. That's yeah. the kind of season it's been throughout. Mm -hmm. And when you consider that it's been that way without fans then really football is such an exciting game. Because <laughs> yeah. usually you'd think that the, the fans are the ones who would make... Like, their presence in the stadium would make the games more unpredictable mm -hmm. by making the Davids uh, yes. uh, of, of football knock out the Goliaths. But mm -hmm. no, it's just football. That's mm -hmm. the beauty of it. Yeah. That's why I don't support... Um, any criteria that doesn't take into account meritocracy, <laughs> <laughs> but, but 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 again, so anyway, but again, yeah. the, 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 the the absence of the fans, I think, has affected some teams. For example, Liverpool. Liverpool. Yes. Liverpool has lost uh, quite a number of games at home, mm -hmm. and if they had the fans, they would not have lost those games. They would mm -hmm. not have been beaten seven goals uh, by Aston Villa if yes. their fans were there. Mm -hmm. Because uh, 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 if you look at the English Premier League, there are the, some some of the the, the, the the most difficult grounds to go and win is Anfield, Anfield. and mm -hmm. St James Park for. for for Newcastle, yes, because the fans are noisy, they sing, and uh, I think that has affected uh, mm -hmm. teams like Liverpool. Yeah, uh, for Arsenal, uh, the players uh, have uh, they're not playing for the badge. You see, there's that mm -hmm. you're being paid, there's no passion. I, I looked at yesterday's game against yeah. uh, Everton, Everton, yes, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they're playing at home, mm -hmm. there's not that hunger to win a football match, mm -hmm. and that has really affected Arsenal. They don't show up. Is that, has that been their main undoing actually? For, for us, we were talking here yeah, off the record and we were like, Arsenal is a, it seems that the club is bigger for Ateta. It's not capable to run that club properly. How no, I, 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 I tend to disagree because yeah. you see, Ateta was uh, at Man City yeah. uh, as an assistant under Guardiola. Mm. And uh, uh, Guardiola is one of the best in the game. So yes. he learned from the best. Mm -hmm. I think Arsenal is just a matter of uh, one. Uh, the players. Yes. Secondly, they are captain. Mm -hmm. They have a captain who cannot rally the team. Yes. You see, the, you, a captain should be loud. 
a mm. captain should be t should be t running <coughs> his troops. Let's go, even when you are. Look at captains like Roy Keane. Yes. Look at uh, uh, Vieira, uh, 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 Vieira when he was at Arsenal. Mm -hmm. the, he could start a fight with Roy Keane in the tunnel. Yes. Uh, you see, Abumeyang does not talk. Mm -hmm. Abu has discipline issues. There's another game he was left uh, because he came late. Yes. You see, that's the what that's, that, that, yeah, that, that, that's what you know. Uh, you, you, that's not what you expect from your captain. Mm -hmm. So they have a few exciting young people coming in. Yes. The problem is now the senior players are not showing up. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at somebody was talking about budget. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ateta was not given money. David Moyes was not given money. And yes. He's performing. Mm -hmm. uh, Carlo Ancelotti. Yes. At Everton. Uh, Arsenal has a bigger budget than yeah, that. Leicester. Yeah. Leicester whom same. did they buy? Mm -hmm. So <coughs> that cannot be the excuse. Aston Villa. Aston Villa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you see, uh, the players have just refused to play for the club. Well, especially tough, the senior players. A tough one for him. They are we'll be looking as the season comes to an end and which players are going to win that one. But away from England, we'll be coming back to preview some of the matches that will be coming your way here this afternoon. But you also got uh, La Liga. Also, also coming on to the end because now I think for the first time we are seeing a three horse race in uh, in La Liga where we are seeing Barcelona there, Atletico Madrid also stamping the authority very well, and also Real Madrid separate also three points with game in hand here and there. It looks like a season that will go all the way to the wire. It's tough, and mm. really for Atletico Madrid. Their nickname is the unlucky ones, and they have accepted it. Yes. They are unlucky. Mm -hmm. But I'm hoping that doesn't come out to play, mm -hmm. and they're unlucky enough to bottle it just at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. I, I hope, and this is to just cut that dominance of Real Madrid and Barcelona. It would be good for football yes. <coughs> also if Atletico Madrid can at least win the Champions League this season. But then again, it's not about... They are out uh, of my emotions here. No, football has <laughs> no room for that. <laughs> yes. I, I think they're going to have to earn it at mm -hmm. the very end. Atletico Madrid, they do still have the chance. They have the best chance out of the three teams you've just mentioned. Yes. But all teams are sort of having <coughs> a realistic chance yes. at it. Any team that drops points from now between those three teams can safely start saying... It's not for them this season. Actually, wh when you look at their table at the moment, you look at uh, Atletico Madrid at the top of the table, three points clear of Real Madrid and five points above Barcelona. Barcelona have a game in hand and they play Atletico Madrid on the 8th of May. Seven games remaining. Those two, that game will have to be key for both Barcelona and, and uh, Atletico so Madrid. And even for Real. <coughs> even for Real that, the outcome of that game. Yeah. Still, even yes. for Real. I think that game gives advantage <laughs> to Real Madrid because yes. Real Madrid has already played Barcelona home and away. Yeah, and Atletico uh, And Atletico home yes. and away. Yes. Uh, so uh, it gives advantage to Real Madrid because <laughs> if this game can end in a draw, mm -hmm. uh, both teams will have dropped points. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, I think what will, what will assist uh, maybe Barcelona and Atletico is uh, the fact that they have been knocked out of the Champions League. Mm -hmm. uh, Real Madrid has uh, still to prepare for the Champions League. Mm. Yes. And uh, that may be an undoing factor for, for, for Real Madrid. Yeah. But as uh, Taylor said, I, I also wish Atletico wins it. Mm. Uh, they, 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 <laughs> yes. really, they, they have a hard-working manager mm -hmm. uh, who drills his team so nicely. Look at what happens in the Champions League. Mm -hmm. uh, they've reached the final. They've lost it to Real Madrid. So painful. Mm. Uh, if we, if we are, you're asked to give it to them, you can give it to them yeah. as an appreciation. <laughs> <laughs> Early Christmas. Early Christmas. Really. Uh, uh, they've yes. really worked their socks off. And yes. it's been season after season after season, yes. not just this season. Yeah. They've been very consistent. They've been such a fantastic side to watch yes. because they combine the technical aspect of the game and the tactical plus the skills. Mm -hmm. They're everything you want in a soccer team. If you want them to defend, they'll defend tight. If yes. you want them to attack, my goodness, they'll attack like a swarm of bees. So you just want them to win, also because of the underdog factor. They are the yes. small brother between <laughs> Barcelona and uh, uh, Real Madrid. Real Madrid yeah. well, really, you want them to win. A big one there for the La Liga brothers. Let's see who is going to win that one. And as it is going also to the wire. But in Germany, also, we can also safe to say that Bayern Munich will go and win their ninth consecutive Bundesliga title. Talk about Spain. The dominance being Real Madrid, Barcelona, 
Atletico, I think they have won in the last 10 years Atletico, I think they have won twice. Yeah, twice. They have won the La Liga twice. But now when it comes to the Germany team, it's Bayern now. Nine uh, titles uh, straight. Seems like for them they have no competition down there. I, I, I'll blame Dortmund. Dortmund have not uh, lived up to the expectation. Yes. Uh, I remember this season we were expecting a, a lot of things from them. Uh, they've not lived up to the hype. Because yes. if you look at now, Bayern is uh, almost 10 points uh, mm -hmm. ahead of, 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 of the closest rival. Mm -hmm. uh, where is Dortmund? Yes. Because uh, RB Leipzig came the other day. But yes. Dortmund, Dortmund has been challenging. And you see, uh, Dortmund, some key players who performed last season, uh, like Jordan Sancho, has not shown up this mm -hmm. season. And uh, that has affected their, 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 their squad a big time. And then um, <coughs> Bayern has a tendency to do their business quietly and early enough. Yes. Mm. Uh, they don't wait for the last minute. Mm. And you see that uh, they already captured Upe Meccano. Mm. Uh, they are budgeting with the next season. Yes. Uh, their coach is stepping down, so they are looking at another coach mm. immediately, before even the season ends. Yes. So by the time they go into pre-season, they have a complete squad. So when they start the season, they start the season off and off. And ha Han mm. Hans Flick is rumored that he might be joining the German national team. Yes, there's yeah, that yeah. talk. Yeah, and I think he yeah. was built for that team. Yeah. Yeah. because he understands German football. The man is an expert, typical yeah. German. They're very good as players, and then they go on to become very good coaches of the game. And, I mean, look at Thomas Tuchel at Chelsea, ah, what yes. he's done. Mm -hmm. Joined mid-season, mm -hmm. and it's like he's been there for ages. Yeah. And what Eric has said about Dutchman is true. We had high expectations, very high hopes of them. They were supposed to be like the Atletico Madrid of the German Bundesliga. Yes. But now they're sitting fifth. But you got to give it to RP Leipzig. Because now they are second in that table and they have really fought hard to get off the likes of uh, uh, Borussia Dortmund from there. The likes of Hoffenheim, who usually make on to the top four of that team. They are not going to play again. So RP Leipzig has. Not a bad season for them. No, not a bad season. Uh, mm. But uh, you look at last season, they, 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 they went also up to the Champions League. I think they were se semi-finalists in the Champions League. Mm. So for the last two seasons, uh, uh, RB Leipzig have done a good job. And uh, uh, they have a young, exciting manager yes. uh, at the age of, I think, 34. Yes. Nagelsmann at the age yeah. of 34. Mm -hmm. And uh, who is also rumored to, to, to be the one who wants to take over after Tottenham. Tottenham are looking at him. Mm -hmm. as, what uh, about Bayern Munich? <laughs> so he's, he's, uh, he's in between Bayern Munich. Munich, uh, Tottenham, yes. mm -hmm. and uh, you see what that young man has done for the last two seasons mm -hmm. is, is exciting. Yes. Uh, they came from nowhere. I did the, the semi finals of the Champions League last season. Uh, this season they are number two in, mm -hmm. the, in, the, in, the, in the Bundesliga. So the problem now is they sell their best players. Yeah. The Meccano is already gone. Mm -hmm. uh, there is another defender who is rumored to come to Manchester United or Manchester City. You see, the moment you're losing your Best, best players best. to your rival. Mm -hmm. You see, it, it rarely happens in England. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, in England, you'll fi you don't find a player moving from Liverpool at his peak to yes. Manchester United. That's yeah. why I was talking uh, of the ceiling problem. on how much clubs <laughs> can actually spend on, <laughs> on players. Because in this kind of scenario, you always have the big fish eating the small fish. Yes. So a team like Leipzig is reinvented. It comes mm -hmm. so close. Then just when it's getting there, the key components that have made that ingredient almost perfect are bought away by the bigger teams. That, that is what and happened then, to the Monaco team. That's yes. what <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you find yeah. that at the end of the day, the mm -hmm. same old names are the same ones that end up dominating mm -hmm. the beautiful game. And yeah. it sort of kills football. Yeah. Because you want a scenario whereby Leipzig can win the Bundesliga instead yeah. of Bayern dominating season in, season out. The, the, the major problem with that is because uh, these big clubs are, let's say, yes, they are companies and they are big companies, but at the end of the day, they are also toys to these uh, rich people. That's why you find like someone like Abramovich has no problem buying a player at 80 million mm -hmm. and uh, relieving him of with 40 million. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, or he can get another player, he can buy a whole team the way he gave uh, uh, Lampard 200 million to go just go and buy players because at the end of the day for him he looks at the team as major leagues. 
play play toy for him is not more of a company yeah. mm. and also and also yeah. the players the players mm. are, are being uh, uh, following money you know yes. remember long time ago uh, I, i remember i was reading somewhere uh, paul scholes uh, was saying that uh, the owner of ac milan at that particular time when paul scholes was at his peak uh, approached him and told him i want you to play for me so he wanted yes. to get paul scores for manchester united to go to AC milan yes. and paul scores said uh, then you have to buy manchester united if you want <laughs> to play for <laughs> you. you see that yes. patriotism that yes. love for your club yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. you don't find one one club players look mm -hmm. at ryan giggs played for mm -hmm. manchester all his life paul scores you don't mm -hmm. find such a way in Rune, you don't find such kind players of players who players. can play even let's uh, say more than 10 years more, more than 10 years yeah. look at the likes of harry kane harry kane maybe next season he'll be in a big club Mm, yeah and there's always that talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you see mm. that, that, that 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 lack of uh, uh, patriotism and lack of identity or a certain club mm -hmm. you find that uh, it becomes a, a problem because when you, when money comes uh, then you go Holland Holland will go but and he's looking at where will I get a lot of money Paul Scholes mm. was making very good money at Manchester United yes. now imagine if he was playing for West Ham <laughs> and the owner of AC Milan approached him <laughs> uh, 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 let's go here yeah. and, and I'll that, give you this <laughs> that, that time the obviously uh, AC Milan chances was, uh, are, uh, uh, former prime minister of yes, the yes, yeah, 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 <laughs> obviously that time you'd have said <laughs> okay fine no problem, <laughs> no problem. Yeah. i mean chances are higher you'd have said that mm -hmm. so there's the money factor still at play mm -hmm. for that one person to remain at a club in this era from start to finish like steven gerrard did at liverpool, yeah, at mm -hmm. liverpool yeah. um, there's the money factor and liverpool yeah. were paying gerrard handsomely mm, yeah. so that's why i'm really saying at the end of the day this mm. thing of having <laughs> a sort of ceiling yeah that says okay this is the most this is the limit is the for limit. managers you see, for players the, I, i understand what you are saying but also uh, that ceiling is there but is uh, let's say complicated because it works with the, the amount of money you make as a club exactly the, the amount of money you make as a company so if manchester united turnover is higher than newcastle for them they are allowed to buy according to their turnover so newcastle cannot buy more than they make we say that mm. that's where the pro the problem comes in now these owners who came in that's where the financial fair play came in so that they wanted to stop owners from injecting money to the club you see that's when uh, financial fair play came so that the clubs can make their own they, 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 use, their they own generate money. their own money to mm. buy their own mm. players but now when the likes of abramovich came in the likes of sheikh mansour the glazers came in for them the club let's it's say a business yeah it's a business so they inject that outside ca cash to the clubs then they let it financial fair play came in. but now i think also down the again. uefa champions league as mm. formulated in 1992 93 mm. there about that season yeah. when it came into force it brought about the money factor yeah. and that really went on and inhibited to mm. phenomenal levels that was the last time just before that that mm -hmm. a team like Steaua Bucharest could win the European Cup yes if you go further down that road you'll find names like Aston Villa having won the European Cup yeah, you'll find <laughs> yeah you'll find those teams you'll find Leeds United mm -hmm. competing in the 70s for this thing but <laughs> ever since the yeah. UEFA Champions League era was constituted mm -hmm. almost 30 years ago yeah you find that it's only certain names that will go on winning this thing because wow. that is where the money is that's where they buy they see Osoro is playing well for Y254 they take him yes. they, so Y254 is left almost without anyone they can depend on in terms of experience skill and so on and so forth so you keep on going back to the drawing board as Y254 assuming Y254 was a football club really yeah, that's so it's that continuity can't happen and it can't you can't win anything in Europe well, big one there for us Teras Weyaki here on Y254 and Erika Gagne Erik let's go on and talk about Italy now Antonio Conte left uh, Chelsea went to Italy took over Inter Milan most likely is also going to win that league and also kill the Juventus dominance Juventus had won it for nine times yes this was their 10th in a row mm -hmm. uh, that is not good for football <laughs> yes. That's not good for football. So I'm really excited for for, for Inter Milan because uh, uh, breaking that dominance. Yes. Uh, 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 
uh, has created excitement and you find that uh, Antonio Conte uh, is a winner. Yes. And uh, when he went to, 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 to Inter Milan, he was backed. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, had, he brought in the likes of Lukaku, yes. who has scored a lot of goals for him. Mm -hmm. uh, he brought in Ashley Young uh, for, for Manchester United, who came in and uh, have, have really uh, assisted uh, the team. Yes. Uh, so you see, uh, that one has brought a challenge to Juventus. And uh, I pity Pillow because uh, he was a great player, uh, but yeah. he took Juventus at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. And uh, too early for him. Uh, too early for him. Yeah. Too big, too mm -hmm. big shoes for like him. Like Lampard at Chelsea. Yeah. yeah, like Lampard at Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Maybe like a Teta at Arsenal. <laughs> 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 uh, you remember when Iniesta was asked uh, to, to when uh, Xavi was asked to take over Barcelona? He said maybe one time. One but day not in now. future, but yes. not now. Yes. Now, I am not ready. Yeah. I think Pillow should have done that. Yeah. Uh, because look at this season, he may end up trophyless. If Atalanta beats him in the final that he's going to, to play, the, that Coppa is it. Italia. Coppa Italia. Yeah. That is it. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Champions League is out. Yeah. The, 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 the domestic league will not win. So mm -hmm. if Atalanta beats him, that is it. Uh, also, AC Milan also, I think uh, this season also they have tried to get out of the other shadows. For a very long time, we have never been here in Mavis, but mm -hmm. now they are coming back to the top. They are second in that uh, league, even though they are 10 points behind Inter Milan. It has been also a very good season for them. I'm impressed. They've come back from the dead. Yeah. They had actually hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. And I think the only way was up for them. Yes. And they've come up pretty well. They've been a joy to watch this season. And they extended uh, Slatan Ibrahimovic's contract by yeah. one more year, mm -hmm. meaning that they are going to continue with that excitement that Ibrahimovic has brought onto the squad. Yes. Unbelievable. He's 39 going on to 40 soon, mm -hmm. and he's playing like he's at his prime. Uh -huh. For a striker, usually at that age, if they must play, they come off the bench to yes. do the thing, to do the business. But Ibrahimovic is good to start in the first 11. He's good coming off the bench. He's Brought just unbelievable. Those young, young yes. players. He's, he's been mm. a leader on yes. the pitch mm -hmm. and I think off it as well. So AC Milan have been exciting to watch, but it's unfortunate that when they came so, so close and it looked as though they would win it this season, mm -hmm. um, they sort of started backsliding a bit. But Either way, finishing s in the top four for them, yes. and it looks like they might finish second, is yeah. good enough. Next season could be one that they go for the trophy, I hope, the Italian they, Scudetto. Yes, a big one there for Italy. But also in France, we've got also Paris and Germain also with five games to go. And uh, they are there with the champions really leading the way. PSG is second, Monaco, and then Lyon. How do you see Mauricio Pochettino and PSG? Can he land that trophy? No, he's more focused on the Champions League. <laughs> yes. Uh, because uh, if you look at uh, that, uh, uh, Paris Saint-Germain, they have dominated that league for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So there's no excitement in winning the, 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 <laughs> the domestic trophy. Yes. And uh, the thought that they are in the Champions League uh, semi-finalists, they can go to the final and win it, eh, uh, is exciting to them. Remember last season, they reached the final and they didn't. He didn't win it. So I think uh, if he's asked to pick between the two trophies, he will pick the Champions League. Yes. And that definitely has, uh, has really shifted because uh, I saw them beat Barcelona for four goals uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Champions League in midweek. And uh, uh, they were beaten by a small team uh, in the domestic league in the <laughs> over the weekend. That yes. shows you the mentality of the players mentality of the players, they are putting more emphasis on the Champions League. Mm -hmm. And it's also an interesting because uh, we've seen uh, the sleeping giants coming up now, Monaco, Lyon, Lille, they, they, they were gone. <laughs> now they're coming up to, to, to challenge and uh, it, it will go up to the last, maybe the last two games. Yes. Uh, the, 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 the French League will go up to the last two games. Well, a big one there. Let's see how those legs are going to go. But right about now, let's also give you a preview of some of the games that are playing this afternoon. It's already kickoff. Actually, nine minutes gone between Liverpool and Newcastle. And already Mo Salah has put Liverpool ahead in the fourth minute. And they are leading Newcastle by one goal to nil. A big game there today that you're going to see there Liverpool playing Newcastle. Liverpool already on the front foot. 
doesn't look like a game they are going to lose, considering now they have to fight for that fourth position. Well, it's too early to tell whether it's a game they could lose or not, because mm -hmm. it's just started. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> it's no surprise that Mo Salah is the one who's found the back of the net for Liverpool. Mm -hmm. He's been the guy who, against all odds, he had COVID-19 at some point, he overcame that, having tested positive and now that meant he had to go into quarantine. Yes. He came back, recovered that form, and he's been going for top scorer of the English Premier League this season. In, in as much as Harry Kane has also been going for it and has been on form. Mo Salah has been one guy who has, even though he's not hit his peak this season like he has done in previous seasons, he's been the guy who's kept Liverpool alive this season. Somehow he finds the back of the net. Yes, some may argue the penalties have come in handy for him. It yes. doesn't matter. He's been finding the back of the net. Mm -hmm. At a time when Sadio Mane has been going downwards and then coming up again. At a time when Liverpool has been as good as dead. But Mo Salah, it doesn't surprise me he's found the back of the net. But I'm not writing off Newcastle United. What, I, what I'm going to post to you, Eric, is Liverpool, this top four position, I think that, that's where, where the league is now at the moment. Who is going to finish in that fourth position? Because we've got Liverpool now. At the moment they, want, they, they are, get the three points, they jump on to the fourth position with 56 points. But you've got Chelsea that have not played. You've got West Ham that have not played. And you've got Tottenham that have not played. And they all they have in the margin. The moment they win their game, they push Liverpool to the seventh position. <laughs> with, I think now... Five matches to go. Down to the wire for Liverpool to make it to the Champions League or next season we might see them playing in the Europa Cup. Uh, on the top four, if, uh, according to my assessment, I think uh, Chelsea will pip Liverpool to the top four, to the fourth position. Yes. Uh, despite the fact that uh, today Chelsea is supposed to play West Ham. Yes. And uh, both of them, uh, the, if Chelsea wins today's game, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, Liverpool uh, <laughs> may not uh, get that top fourth position. Because again, mm -hmm. the reason why I, I'm banking on Chelsea is that uh, Chelsea, Chelsea have a bigger squad. Mm -hmm. The Chelsea manager yes. can afford to rotate. Mm -hmm. uh, Liverpool, uh, one of their problems, their squad is aging. Yes. Uh, most of their players are in their early 30s or late 20s. So you find that they cannot play week in, week out. I read something about uh, uh, the captain of Leeds United. Yes. Uh, Leeds United, uh, Liverpool scored an early goal. Mm -hmm. The game went up to the 90th minute when Leeds uh, equalized. equalized. Yeah. And uh, uh, the Bamford, actually, mm -hmm. it was Bamford, the striker. Bamford mm -hmm. was saying that mm -hmm. Fabinho kept on mm -hmm. uh, uh, shouting to the other players the liverpool players, players eh? yeah. they were playing too deep meaning yes. they are tired uh -huh. they cannot come up and go yes. so before they considered that call in the 90th minute yeah and you see when you are 39 uh, or when you're th when you're 29 or 32 it becomes a problem for you to go up and down up and down yeah. and then you're against a 23 year old mm -hmm. a 22 year old yes and you see that has affected them uh, because of that and uh, then now the injuries that came up yeah are really took a toll on the team because uh, uh, the central defense has practically been out the whole season. Yeah. And you see, if you look at the Chelsea squad now, the Chelsea squad is big. Uh, if you look at their bench power, it's strong enough. So the, player, the, the coach can be able to, to rotate. Yeah. And uh, maybe that may be the factor that will, may make Chelsea now be able to do what? To become, uh, to, to, to pip it to the fourth position. And then now that is the game that now everybody will be watching today because now West Ham playing home to Chelsea is going to be a cracker because all of them are fighting for that fourth position. That game will determine a lot for Liverpool. It's mm. funny how the mathematics are panning out right now. Mm. Remember earlier we said that... Um, the Barcelona Atletico Madrid match will determine a lot for Real Madrid. Yes. Now even here, mm -hmm. the West Ham Chelsea game will determine a lot for Liverpool. Mm -hmm. Whoever emerges tops in that game, yes. or if they draw still, that will determine a lot for Liverpool because all those three teams mm -hmm. are in contention for a top four slot to secure a Champions League spot for next season. Yes. And it's the mathematics at play. So you're, you're watching this game with another one in mind. Mm -hmm. And then when you watch that game, you'll have this particular game in mind. Yeah. So really, you have to factor in all these things. Yeah. Every touch 
counts. Every throwing counts. Mm. Every, each and every decision made or not made yes. counts. That's where we've reached in the season. Because obviously, as we, Eric said earlier, the Manchester City have taken the, the mm -hmm. U, uh, uh, English Premier League. Yes. That one is a foregone conclusion. Mm -hmm. It's now the, the, the match is about the top four finish. Top four finish. So yeah. that's where all the focus on mm -hmm. is, is on right now. And Chelsea, West Ham, remember, that is a derby. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. West Ham feel that they are the, the men of London. And Chelsea, they feel, are the softies of London. <laughs> so there will be a lot of poly dy dy dynamics into that. Yeah. And then this one is also a derby in a sense, because Liverpool and Newcastle are up there in north of England. They're sort of neighbours up there mm -hmm. towards Scotland, yeah. and going towards Scotland. So in a sense, this one is also a derby. It's interesting. This one, I mean, it's very, very interesting. As we see, there are some of the other matches that will be being played today because Sheffield United playing Brighton, then Wolves will be playing home to Burnley. Tomorrow, we have Leeds United playing Manchester United. Aston Villa will be playing home to West Brom. Then at the King Power Stadium, Leicester will be playing Crystal Palace. Let's talk about the game tomorrow. Eric Leeds, Manchester United. Also, a big one for, United, for Leeds, actually. But also... United have already also stamped their second position, but also they need these points. They need the points and uh, it will be an explosive match because uh, we have two teams that play attacking football. Yes. Uh, Leeds will not sit back. Leeds will come. Manchester United will be counting on that. Come, we hit you in the counter. Mm -hmm. Last encounter ended in 4-1, four, four, 6-2, six, 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 I think. Yes. Uh, when they play last 6-2 uh, in favour of Manchester United. Mm -hmm. So it's going to have goals. Yeah. Because Leeds play an open uh, game. Mm -hmm. They don't fear. They will come to you. You score, you, you, they concede four goals, they will still come. Mm -hmm. And uh, Manchester United are very good on the counter. And Olegana will be banking on uh, on uh, on uh, on uh, the speedy wingers in the in Rashford uh, to harass the Leeds defence, and uh, you'll find that uh, this is an open game that uh, eventually I see a lot of goals. It's not a game that can end in a nil nil draw. No, uh, there'll be there'll be a lot of goals. The only problem with Manchester is that they are usually slow off the track. The after the gun has been shot in there and now start the race, yes. they take their time, they take their time and they've become more of a second half team. And because they've won so many games in the past or just survived losing games and drawn in the yeah. past and in the last few minutes of the game, um, they've escaped from intense scrutiny in terms of their first half performance, whereby they play well in the first half, kind of, but fail to score. And then they come in the second half and play so well and bang in those goals. When you're playing a team like Leeds, that Eric has, has just pointed out, they'll come out guns blazing, attacking, attacking. You want to get off those blocks at the same time with them so that it's, they, you give them as much as you're taking from them. You yeah. don't want to give them that advantage of hitting you first and then now you wait until the second half to come in strong for them. You've got to go all out. And if I really had to, a gun upon my head right now and I'm told who between the two sides will win, yes. I think if Manchester United get it right, they'll win this one, I think. Well, big one there for Manchester United, <laughs> but we'll be hoping next season is where now they need to start on the front foot to start winning those matches. But let's also finish off with the Champions League that will be coming next week, the semi-final of the UEFA Champions League. Real Madrid, where are they playing? Real are playing Chelsea. Chelsea. And PSG are playing Manchester City. Yeah, it's because I don't like pronouncing the other two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, I know Eric said um, given Eric said given a, a yeah. choice, PSG. Mm -hmm. What would they pick? The Champions yeah. League or <laughs> the French Low Championnat, the League One? Yes. I think maybe PSG as a team would pick the Champions League, as Eric has just said. Yeah. But Pochettino would pick both because mm -hmm. he needs that for his legacy. Yes. It wouldn't be good enough if he wins the Champions League and doesn't win the French League One. There'll always be those question marks about how, how comes he didn't win the League One. Yes. So I, I think he's going all out for both. Mm -hmm. And I, I think he's got a higher 
weight on the scales against yeah. Manchester City. Terrific side, Manchester City. Yes. But men, PSG are playing football made in the stars. And mm -hmm. Mauricio Pochettino has played Pep Guardiola for some time and he has actually won against Pep Guardiola. Manchester City, Paris Saint-Germain. It is a game that is also going to be very explosive. It is a bit giving Mauricio Pochettino a chance there, but it is the Champions League and you cannot write off Pep Guardiola's team. The only problem with Pep Guardiola is sometimes he overthinks. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when he overthinks, he tinkers a lot with his, uh, his, his formation and uh, his starting lineup. Yeah. Today, you cannot tell me uh, Man City's predicted lineup. Yes. Especially up front. Maybe in the defense, you'll know Diaz will be there, Stones will be there, mm -hmm. and uh, their keeper. Yeah. But up front, you don't really know. And, and, and uh, of, of late, you've not, uh, he's frozen out Sterling. Mm -hmm. Sterling is not starting games. Yeah. There was a time he had frozen out Mares. Mm -hmm. And you see, that is the only big, the, the biggest problem with him. And uh, when you have things and over tinkers, then it affects the, the stability of the team. Yes. And uh, that is why you find that uh, uh, Mauricio Pochettino knows how to beat Manchester City because he has done it with Tottenham. Yes. Not once. And uh, in this game, I am putting my money on Mauricio Pochettino because mm. he's, he's had Neymar come back into the yeah. team. Uh, remember, he beat Barcelona without Neymar. Yeah. And uh, he's going to, 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 to attack Man City from the word go because he plays attacking football. Yeah. Uh, it will be an interesting game. Wow, to the semi-finals <laughs> that are coming up there. Manchester City playing Paris Saint-Germain is going to be another game. But also we got Real Madrid playing against Chelsea also in the other semi-final. What do you make of that one? I make, uh, well, the Champions League is not about favourites, it's about surprises. Yes. But pretty much amongst the elite yes. there. Mm -hmm. uh, these are two elite sides and Real Madrid are more elite than Chelsea because they say some animals are more equal than others. Mm -hmm. And even though Real Madrid have that chance over Chelsea, the way Chelsea are playing right now and the way Tuchel understands football, I would not be entirely surprised, even though I think Real will win over the two legs on aggregate, mm -hmm. I will not be entirely surprised as to lose my sleep if Chelsea have the last laugh. Yes. I'm not writing them off, but Real have the upper hand. Nobody expected them to beat Atletico Madrid, uh, Chelsea. Mm. And uh, very many people are not expecting them to beat, to beat Real Madrid. Uh, but they, have, they are capable of beating Real Madrid mm. in the sense that if they score first, you see, the problem with Chelsea uh, yes. after Tuchel came in is that uh, they have a lot of possession. They are very compact. But that precision, that last pass to get yes. goals. So you've seen them winning 2-1, 1-0. One, you see, such kind of things. They, they, they've not scored four goals. But they have the firepower. But the coach is emphasizing on compactness of the team mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and that one uh, will uh, create problems for Real Madrid because Real Madrid again they have a, lot, a, few, a few injuries here and there mm. and uh, uh, it's a very open game. Like is Real Madrid right? winning against uh, Liverpool without uh, Sergio Ramos, without Verane yes. in that defense also spoke a bit of uh, Volume. Zinedine. Al about Zinedine. Zinedine yeah. Zidane is a specialist of the Champions League. <laughs> yeah. He's won you know. it, I think, three times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's a specialist back of the Champions back. League. Yes. He, he, he does, mm. uh, there was a time he was barely making impact in the in the, in the, in the, in the La Liga, La Liga yes. and uh, he won the Champions League. Mm -hmm. And you see, uh, he beat Atalanta when if, nobody expected him to beat Atalanta mm -hmm. because Atalanta were exciting, mm. they had a good squad, he had injuries. He yeah. came and beat comprehensively, he beat Liverpool. Uh, when nobody was expecting, he beat Liverpool 3-0. When they came, he locked the game. Mm -hmm. When he knew he had injuries, he locked the game. Yes. So he, he's a very good tactician. And uh, uh, it's, it will be interesting to see how these two mm. uh, yes. play out. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Uh, but above everything, uh, because of uh, Zinedine Zidane, uh, I'll, I'll give it to Zinedine Zidane. Over the two leagues. The point I like most about what Eric has said, mm -hmm. that compactness of Chelsea mm -hmm. under Tuchel, yeah. Zidane usually has a problem cracking a compact side. That's yes. why you see he struggles beating Atletico Madrid. Yeah. It, al it will almost always end in a draw when he faces Atletico Madrid. Because mm -hmm. they score fast and then they go compact for him. Yes. He really, really plays his last card yeah. to score and equalize against a, a, a compact side. So it's going to be very interesting to see how, especially if Real concede fast, how they'll be able to crack that but you cannot write 
Real Madrid under Zinedine Zidane in the UEFA Champions League. Yeah. I've done it before in private. <laughs> I didn't say it publicly. I didn't tweet. I didn't post on Facebook. Yes. <laughs> but man, I swallowed my pride. Uh -huh. Zidane is good. It's, you know, when he's quiet, he's a quiet guy. He's an introvert. And when you're quiet, mm -hmm. people will write you off a yes. lot. People mm -hmm. respect the loud mouths. Yeah. Zidane is just quiet in nature. And he gives you the results. So uh, I can't write them off, really. Well, a big one there for Real Madrid and Chelsea in the, in the other semi-final of the Champions League. Then we have uh, Paris Saint-Germain and also going head-to-head -head against Manchester City. That's a game also everybody will be watching to see how it is going to play out. But also we go the Europa League. Manchester United are in the semi-final also. Do you fancy their chances to the final? Yeah. I fancy their chances to the final because uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they, they, have, they have players who've come back from injury and they're doing very well, like uh, Paul Pogba. Yes. In the last two games, he's really played brilliant football. Mm -hmm. And um, they have the bench power to, 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 ch to change things up in the midfield. And you see, the moment they can be able to do that, uh, then they become unpredictable. Yeah. And then they have, uh, they have, uh, they are combining a youth plus experience uh, up front. Uh, when uh, Greenwood cannot do the job, then Cavani comes in and does the job. Yes. You see, that, that, that one, and once they get to the final, if they get to the final, then they, 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 there are very high chances they lift it. Yeah. Uh, because equally, Roma is a very good side. Yeah. And um, if they can be able to beat Roma, uh, then they will lift it. And uh, to make even uh, the situation even be more important to Manchester United, that's the only trophy they can win right now. Mm. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Olegana has been uh, uh, accused of not bringing silverware. And uh, even Mourinho had a dig at him telling him, I was there, I won this, I won, you've not won anything. Yes. So he's banking on the champion, on the, on the Europa League. Because uh, it's like a specialist failure when it comes to the semi-final. If you can get past the semi-final, that's what I'm saying. If you can get past the semi-final, <laughs> yes. he will win it. <laughs> because uh, mm -hmm. there are very few finals that Manchester United gets in yes. and, uh, and loses. Mm -hmm. And uh, the exit of also Ed Woodward uh, from uh, running the football, also brings in mm -hmm. a, a area somewhere. It is going to bring in a lot of info involvement from Ferguson. Mm -hmm. Ferguson is going to be a lot uh, involved a lot in the in the in the squad. It's 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 good you have brought in uh, the Eddie Udo are leaving Manchester United. I remember when uh, Ferguson was working for Manchester United at that time. His uh, point man in the boardroom was David Gill. David Gill. And they had a very good relationship, exactly. getting good players and all that. But it seems that since Eddie Udo had Give me the point. Ed the Woodward board, is a businessman. He's yeah. a businessman. Mm -hmm. So he's not the kind of person you go and tell him, uh, get this player for 100 million. He refused to pay 100 million for Jordan Sancho. Yes. Uh, Outrightly last season. Yeah. But if it was David Gill, mm -hmm. David Gill loved football. Yeah. <laughs> and he'll do it, loved Manchester United. Ferguson mm -hmm. loves football and loves mm -hmm. Manchester United. So he'll mm -hmm. do everything, anything in his power to get. Mm -hmm. I remember I read uh, there was somewhere, uh, you see, how he brought in. Cristiano Ronaldo, they played against Lisbon. Yes. Cristiano Ronaldo terrorized the Manchester uh, United defense. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the game was at halftime, Rio Ferdinand and, uh, and uh, the other players told uh, Ferguson, you must go with this kid. Yes. And by the time they left that, they had already signed Ronaldo. Yeah. <laughs> so you see, that person who loves football. But Woodward, <coughs> he, he actually was being accused, he was the point man of JP Bank uh, JP in the Super League yeah. thing. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, well, there are very high chances of going back to JP. After, yeah, his for, uh, after Manchester United. He used to work there. Yeah. He used to work there. Yeah. Yeah. He's going back there. And, wow. and usually that's the clash in a club. Mm -hmm. Normally, there's a businessman in the club who's been tasked to make profits for the club. Mm -hmm. And then there's a tactician in the club who's mm -hmm. being taxed with a job, taxed with the job of getting results for the club. Yes. So there's usually a clash between these two because mm -hmm. the guy who's the tactician is saying, I need this player mm -hmm. so that I can be able to Give provide the results. Yes. And then this guy is saying, no, 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 we are cutting down on costs. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's got to make profits. So he's thinking in but, terms of, mm -hmm. um, you make do with what you yes. have. Then there's a culture clash there. In, in, in the other semi-final, we have got uh, Villarreal playing Arsenal. So chances... Manchester United might play Arsenal in the final of no. the Europa League. No. <laughs> Arsenal will not make it to the final, my friend. Unai Emery is at, at Villarreal. Yeah, he yeah. was at Arsenal. He knows. Yes. <laughs> Unai yeah. Emery is a specialist of the Europa League. Yes. Uh, he's won it with, uh, with Sevilla mm -hmm. uh, several times. So yes. Arsenal mm -hmm. may not make it to the final.
Mm. And yeah. you see, uh, there's, there's a way Unai Emery uh, 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 sets up his team. Yes. And look at Villa, since he came to Villarreal, mm -hmm. they've been able to reach the semi final yes. of, of the Europa Cup. Mm -hmm. They've not done that before yes. in the recent years. So we cannot rule them off completely. Mm. Uh, Arsenal. It's hard for Arsenal. It's hard. It's an them. uphill task, yeah. really, and they're not consistent. You've got yeah. to be consistent. Well, but I know we have played a very the good uh, campaign when it comes to the Europa League. Is have we the it's Premier League? They mess up, but the Europa they messed League up in the first game mm -hmm. against uh, the last the quarter final. Yes, they they they, they, they lost one nil. Yeah, and then they came in the second game and won four nil. Mm -hmm. Unai Emery will not allow them to mm -hmm. do that. Uh -huh. you see, yes. You see, uh, yes. You see, they, they start off slow. Yeah. And then the second leg, they came and, uh, and beat, I think it was Sparta Praga or something. Yes. They, beat, they beat them 4 nil. Yeah. Uh, and you see, uh, that one, uh, you, cannot, you cannot mess up like that when it reaches to this, uh, the finish line. You know, it's at the yeah. finish line. I know last weekend they lost, um, was it 1 nil to Deportivo Alave? Yes. Villarreal. Yes. But I think that was a one off. Really, um, they are more consistent than Arsenal. And at this level, you must be consistent. I don't fancy Arsenal's chances. And if somehow they miraculously get, because miracles happen in football, mm -hmm. get to the final, I still don't see them winning the final. Yes. They're lucky. They count themselves lucky to be here. <laughs> but um, there's something I wanted to say about Tuchel and Chelsea that I didn't say. Let me say it before we go off air. Yeah. Apart from building a compact Chelsea side, Tuchel is also a good man manager. Because mm -hmm. if you look at how Kat Zuma has improved under him, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Kat Zuma had become the fallout guy. He was yeah. scoring own goals against his own team. Yeah. And he was also lead playing up other mistakes that were costing Chelsea at the back. Yes. But since Tuchel came, Kat Zuma has been reborn. And he's the Kat Zuma of the Chelsea <laughs> and the youth yes. side that mm -hmm. really did well in the FA Cup. Yeah. Yeah. And in other tournaments, he's... I mean, Tukel is also a good man manager. Back to the UEFA Europa League. <laughs> <laughs> the UEFA Europa League is the semi final. Manchester United will be playing Roma, and then Villarreal will be starting against Arsenal in the first of the semi final of the Europa League. That has been a simple preview, but we'll be looking at it also next week when these games have been played. These gentlemen will be here to tell us if their predictions are going to be going to be perfect. Yes. Given Real Madrid, he also gave Real Madrid. Um, to go through, you also gave PSG, I remember, and <laughs> Paris said, you never gave Manchester City a chance there with Pep Guardiola to get on to that semi-final, but we might see how it is going on. The games that are happening at the moment, Liverpool is still leading Newcastle by one goal to nil, and then West Ham will come your way at 7.30 against Chelsea. That's a very good London derby. And we'll be finishing off the day with Sheffield United against Brighton half. But it, we are back to England. Then there's one talking point. We cannot leave this table without discussing it. And gonna talk about our favorite coach, Jose Mourinho. <laughs> <laughs> Being let go on mucho concert uh, by the man himself, Daniel Levy of Tottenham. To me personally, and I said it earlier on when he was hired, mm. uh, it was not a, f a matter of if he will be fired, but when he will be fired. Mm -hmm. One, these are two strong personalities. Yes. Have Jose Mourinho is a very strong personality, and we have D Daniel Levy on the other side, a very strong personality. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there will happen, there was just, there will be clashes. Yes. Uh, and then, um, secondly, we have Jose Mourinho who doesn't really know how to deal with the current crop of players mm -hmm. that we have right now. Yes. Uh, da, uh, Dele Ali is not Didier Drogba. Uh -huh. Didier yes. Drogba, you'll bench him, you'll mm -hmm. go and tell him words, and those harsh words will mm -hmm. w strive him to want to do better. Yes. Dele Ali, you do that with him, mm -hmm. he will shrink, he will not perform. Yes. And uh, you find that that is the current of, uh, crop of players that mm -hmm. we have right now. Yeah. Uh, during uh, uh, Sir Alex Ferguson, uh, he shouted at everybody mm -hmm. apart from Louis Nani. He mm -hmm. never shouted at Louis Nani. Mm -hmm. He never, that, 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 that 
noise he never made because he understood what kind of player Luis Nani is. Mm -hmm. There are those kind of players, if you want them to perform, you bring them closely. Jose Mourinho doesn't know how to do that. Uh, he comes hard on them. Yeah. And the crop of players right now, I'll say they are wrapped in cotton wool. <laughs> <laughs> there, uh, there was a time I think he went to the dressing room after a game and he took a photo of the Tottenham team yes. after a game and every player was on a phone. Yes. And he wondered if that is a dressing room. But he has also been known as a coach who every club he has been into, I think, uh, let's say, except Inter Milan, mm. he ends up having conflicts with the players and he ends up leaving that club. I think Chelsea, the second spell, he had conflict with the, the players. Look at Tottenham, the same, same thing. Manchester United had problems with Pogba and all that. As Eric has said, he has problem man managing these players but also he loses the dressing room real quickly and he's just got the words out of what i said we said on this show last week mm. Mourinho doesn't know how to deal with the current crop of players yes he knew how to deal with that previous generation mm. the ones you cast at you swore at and you mm. told them men you're better than that these ones of, warriors, yeah, go and fight. Yeah, these ones mm -hmm. of today are different. Mm -hmm. You have to approach them more diplomatically. Mm -hmm. And we said it um, over here, we said even parenting has changed. Yeah. The way our folks brought us up yeah. is not the same way we are bringing up the generations of today. Mm -hmm. It's different. Yeah. Um, an African father, and I'm sure you've seen those jokes on the social media, Kenyan social media space. Yes. African fathers of our time were distant. Mm -hmm. You spoke to him on a need to basis. Mm -hmm. Today, I hear my neighbor's kids who say, hey, dad, mm -hmm. Sema. <laughs> you couldn't do that <laughs> during your <laughs> time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> Mourinho now needs to adapt to mm -hmm. the Instagram people dad. relations yeah. of, of today <laughs> yeah become an instagram dad yeah because times have changed yeah. and times will always change those are the realities mm -hmm. um so you have um dads having conversations even with their daughters that mm -hmm. fathers of our time mm -hmm. would not have had with our where, sisters where, so where do you think he will end up now uh, any hopes of him joining let's say national team or he uh, uh, will also go back to another football club. No, he'll go back to another football club because uh, uh, let's not take away what he has done for football. Mm. Yes. Uh, look at his owners. Uh, uh, you look at what he's done for football, and not only in one country, mm -hmm. in Portugal, in, uh, in Spain, mm -hmm. in Italy, yes. and also in, 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 Engl in England. Mm -hmm. A very brilliant manager. Uh, but uh, he said himself that uh, he doesn't see himself coaching a national team because it's boring. Okay. Yes. Uh, he wants action week in, week okay. out, week in. Mm. Week out. A national team will not give him that. Yeah. But what I'm sure is that he will not end up in a small club. Yeah. Because he, he cannot uh, survive in that small club. Now, I was thinking of him going to the Syria. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, if Juventus if like Atalanta it. don't do well next season, maybe yeah, midway they can have him, or Juventus can have him. Uh, He's built for Syria. Yeah. Uh -huh. And someone else France. mentioned France. France, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. When he took over the work at Tottenham as manager, that one I sent on social media and I said, Tottenham uh, for, for, is not built for, for him. For Tottenham, he was, he was going to not fail. Why? Mm. He plays a different kind of football, football from, from Mauricio Tottenham. Pochettino. Yes. Mauricio Pochettino plays attacking, attacking football, football, open game. Him now, he plays compact game. Yes. Now, to drill these players to a to, 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 to accept his compact game, it, it was going to it take was, a long time. Yeah. And, and uh, he was built to, to, to fail. It's he just the way he went to yes. Manchester. Manchester and then, an attacking side. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, then he was not given he was parking the bus. Wow. Bad one there for Jose Mourinho. And then now, Tottenham will be playing over the weekend also in the EFL Cup. I didn't understand <laughs> the sacking uh, for me. City. I didn't understand the, the, the sacking for me. Mm -hmm. Six days to the EFL Cup, if yeah. EFL Cup uh, you sack your Final. manager. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not understand. Anyway, but uh, an exciting manager came back, came in uh, in Ryan Mason. Mm -hmm. uh, very good for him. At the time, 29 he, years 29 old. Years old. Mm -hmm. uh, he had to cut his play <coughs> uh, career short because of a concussion on the head. So yeah. that's something good for him. And he came in and won against... And uh, he's a Tottenham boy. Yeah, he's a Tottenham boy. Oh, he's a Tottenham yeah. boy. He's yeah. a Tottenham yeah. boy. Uh, he's been in Tottenham throughout. He won against Southampton. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I was reading as I was coming yeah. in. I was reading <coughs> Harry My Kets. director is reminding me that he's 29 years of age at the moment. Yes. 
and I look at him and saying he's 29, he has started his career in the Premier League. Yes. And he, once or twice a year, he'll be playing Roy Hodgson. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> who, is, who is the oldest? He's 73. Mm -hmm. yes. ah. And then you try to picture him. Yeah. What is our 29-year-old doing right now? Uh, yes. Kenya. He's an admin of a, of a WhatsApp group, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the only thing he can boost off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, this 29 year old yes. coach yes. can be the one who can manage to handle now this kind of this generation of players at the moment. Uh, maybe, maybe because he understands them. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at Tottenham, apart from Hurricane, Yes. And maybe song. Mm -hmm. uh, there are the others are, 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 are a pancake. Uh, kind say who go low is also uh, yeah, yeah, maybe who go low is. And that's why you find that who go low shouts at them and makes a lot of money because he cannot understand <laughs> yes. why are you not tracking back? Why are you yeah. not doing this? You see, yeah. uh, Hurricane has that hunger. These other ones they want to go PlayStation to media and do you know such kind of things. Eh? Yeah. That's uh, um, <laughs> Mourinho not entertain such kind of nonsense. <laughs> but is, right. yeah, it was unfair to sack Mourinho just before the, <laughs> getting them to a final. That was wrong. That one I'll stand for him. That's where we come yeah. to the end of the touchline here on Roy to perform Robert Osoro, Erika Ganya here and Tyrus Uyaiki. It has been a pleasure for everyone who has managed to make this show a success. We say good afternoon and thank you. Enjoy the rest of your broadcast here on Y254.